genuine, compassionate, and devotional, Maria Corazon Coanco Aquino was born on January 25, 1933 in Tarlac Province. She served as the first female president of the Philippines from year 1986 to 1990. She restored democratic rule after the long dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos. Under her administration, there are significant policies developed in the field of science. Let us study the timeline of President Corazon Aquino's major contributions in the field of science and technology. Magandang araw Pilipinas, maayong adlaw buhon. Ito po si Mariska Duyak nagbabalita mula sa siyudad ng Tagbilaran ang maghahati ng dikalidad at maaasang balita saan man sa mundo. Grado 1 Sa ulo ng mga balita, The Rise and Shine of Science and Technology Under Corazon's Administration Corazon Aquino, Shaping the Philippines as a Nation Tayo'y makibalita at makialam sa mga naging tagumpay ng ating dating presidente na si Cory Aquino. Narito si Junelo Bohol, magbabalita, Junilo. Yes, Miss Maris. Ilan sa mga nasagap ko dito sa Quezon City tungkol sa mga naging achievements ni President Cory Aquino. In 1986, President Cory Aquino reorganized the National Science and Technology. Aquino encouraged scientists and inventors to bring the Philippines to its former position as second to only Japan in the field of science and technology. In 1986, during Corazon Aquino's presidency, the National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, giving a representation in the cabinet. Under the medium-term Philippine Development Plan for the years 1987 to 1992, science and technology's role in economic recovery and sustained economic growth was highlighted. Aquino encouraged scientists and inventors to bring the Philippines to its former position as second to Japan in the field of science and technology. Pag-usapan naman natin ang naging development ng sensya at teknolohiya mula sa pre-colonial period hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Alam nyo ba noong 800 to 1300 CE? Nagaroon ng Chinese developed eyeglasses. At noong 16th century, nagaroon ng first compound microscope. At pagkalipas ng ilang siglo, ay patuloy na umuusbong ang siyensya at teknolohiya. At ngayong 21st century, ay nabuo naman ang vacuum cleaning, robot at iba pang mga kagamitan na galing sa teknolohiya. At ako si Juni Lugon, nag-uulat mula sa Quezon City. Balik sa'yo dyan, Maris. Para naman sa karagdagang kaalaman, pakinggan natin si Rika Balaman mula sa Baguio City. Rika? sa Baguio City, ayun sa aking nakapanayam ay sinasabing ilan na naging achievements ni Corazon Aquino ay she encouraged the private research sector to form a stronger band with public research to help jumpstart the progress in the area of Philippine research and development. Ironically, 
It was during President Carson Aquino's term and the reorganization of Philippine bureaucracy that Executive Order No. 128 abolished Republic Act No. 3859, also known as the Philippine Inventors Incentive Act. This Philippine Inventors Commission was under the Science Development Board. It gave assistance to Filipino inventors through giving financial aid, patent application assistance, legal assistance, and to help inventors market their products domestically and abroad. Despite the abolishment of the Philippine Inventors Commission, her administration gave rise to new avenues for the government to aid the progress of science and technology in the country. Ilan pang sinasabing achievements ni Corazon I, in 1987, during her presidency, the National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, giving science and technology a representation in the cabinet. Under the medium-term Philippine Development Plan for the years 1987 to 1992, science and technology's role in economic recovery and sustained economic growth was highlighted. Its functions were broadened for it to be able to support local scientific efforts, develop technological self-reliance, and promote public and private sector awareness in the sciences. For truth and accuracy, Rika Balamad, Nagbabalita. Puntan naman tayo sa Visayas. Ating alamin kung ano-ano ang muling naging tagumpay ng ating dating presidente na si Cory Aquino. Giselle, ano-ano ang mga nasagap mo dyan? in the resident of Cebu City on January 30, 1987, the USD ASTI has gained prominence because of its contributions in ICT, microelectronics, and R&D as a country bids for national development and global competitiveness. As an offshoot of such sequential events, the DOSD ASTI was created as a research and development institute of the department by virtue of Executive Order No. 128. During her term under the Organization of Philippine Bureaucracy, the Executive Order No. 128 abolished RA No. 3859, also known as the Philippine Investors Incentive Act. This Philippine Inventors Commission was under the Science Development Board. Despite the abolishment of it, her administration gave rise to new avenues for the government to aid the progress of science and technology in the country. On August 8, 1988, she created the Presidential Task Force for Science and Technology, which came up with the first Science and Technology Master Plan, or STMP. The goal of STMP was for the Philippines to achieve newly industrialized country status for the year 2000. For truth and accuracy, this is Rizal Torres reporting. Back to studio. Ngayon, dumako naman tayo sa Mindanao. Makibalita kay John Lloyd Bano. John Lloyd? Yes, Kaduya. Aking napag-alaman ang ilan sa mga sigunan sa panakpun ni Pangulong Corazon Aquino. Ayon sa mga residente, taong 1990, President Corazon Aquino signed Executive Order 430, creating the National Committee on Biosafety of the Philippines, NCBP. This is probably one of the first among developing countries. In April 28, 1992, President Corazon Aquino signed Republic Act No. 7459, known as the Inventors and Invention Incentive Acts of the Philippines. It's law titled as an act providing incentives to Philippine inventors and expanding the, the functions of technology applications of promotion and substitute, appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. The inventors of invention and significant acts is the prime, country's prime law that recognizes the significant contributions of our inventors and researchers. Ako si Janet Bank, nag-uulat mula dito sa Dapo City, balik sa iyo dyan sa studio. Sa 
Lahat ng tagumpay ng ating dating Pangulo na si Cory Aquino, paano nga ba ito nakatulong sa ating bansang Pilipinas? Pakinggan natin si Lisa G. Lisa? Nagkapanayam natin ang isa sa mga residente dito sa Manila. Kung sabi niya, he also implemented the Public Act 6655 or the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988. Designs for the mass program which aimed to improve scientific and technological literacy of the Filipinos was implemented in a school system in tandem with the opening of doors to free education up to the secondary level. Some of her developments during her term, the use of trichoderma for rapid composting had an impact on the countryside and reduced a reliance on imported fertilizer as of February 1982. There were 253 mass production facilities across the county, covering 4,980 hectares and employing 7,895 farmers. Then, the development of a sex reversal technology that turns female tilapia into male tilapia. There are 26 tilapia pilot cooperators in 23 municipalities and 19 provinces as of May 1982. A dispersed unit was also set up the DOSD main building school where over 5,000 pinkulings were sold at low prices promoting Bacter tilapia culture in Metro Manila. To sustain the country's momentum, Aquino administration has been continuously improving upon the good governance reforms it has established, which includes strengthening the mechanisms necessary for the swift and efficient delivery of services to people. Talaga nga namang napakaganda ang naging kontribusyon ng ating dating Pangulo na si Kua Sotakini. Ako si Balate, balik sa iyo dyan sa studio. At doon po nagtatapos ang mga balitang grado 1. Salamat sa inyong pagtangkilik at sanay lahat ng balitang ating nasasaga ay... Grado 1